Good afternoon, lovely people. How are you all doing today? I hope you're all doing fine and dandy. I'm not in the garden <laughs> for once. Um, I'm basically, I'm taking a couple of days off. Oh, for the first time in months, I'm gonna have a day off, yay. So uh, I'm just racing to get all sorts of other little bits and pieces done get some work done, etc, etc. Now one of my main jobs for today, hence the title of the video, is I need to deal with some of my clothes. Just before I get into that, I want to say a thank you for a birthday present. Oh, so lovely. At the end of the video I did at the end of June, my thoughts on at the end of June, and I was showing you the tea bags. Oh, I should have had a cup of tea while I was doing this. I might have one later. Anyway, I was saying how I really love practical gifts. For my birthday, the lovely Nancy, let me show you them separately, sent this gorgeous fabric. I don't know how well the colour will pick up. I've got to have the lights on today because it's so dull and overcast outside. Another reason for not being in the garden. This is on a sort of an ivory, creamish ivory background. Lavenders, oh, so lovely. Isn't that delightful? And a second one, also lavenders. Let me hold it the right way up for you. Isn't that pretty? And that's on a more of a white background. Oh, my gorgeous. Oh, I'm, you know, Nancy, thank you so much. Obviously, I've thanked her privately already, but I just wanted to share that because I'm so excited to do something. I mean, they're screaming out to be lavender bags of some description, and they may well be, but I can tell you this much. If I do, I'm definitely keeping one of them for me to remember such a lovely present. I was so excited because the parcel arrived. I wasn't expecting it. I didn't know what it was. Oh, her. And I opened it and it was gift wrapped inside in some lovely tissue paper with a little sticker on the outside and it said textiles francaise. And I thought, oh, French textiles. <laughs> anyway, so I was really good and I saved it to open on my birthday. So thank you ever so much, Nancy. Find somewhere else to put them. I'm surrounded by bits and pieces today <clears throat> because like I said, I'm going to have a bit of a sewing day and it kind of occurred to me that I'll talk a little bit today about how the frugal girl does clothes shopping. Just give me a second. Oh, sorry about that. I've just, I've literally just washed my hands before I start handling all my fabrics and I hadn't put any cream on afterwards, so I need to cream up a bit. Normally, I would put on my own calendula balm, but I had some lovely hand cream from my sister for my birthday, and the, the, it's called After the Rain. Oh, I wish I could smell it, it's beautiful. Somehow it does smell like After the Rain. I can't remember what's in it. Lime, rose, and sandalwood. So it's got some those lovely dark notes that I like, the sandalwood, those really dark, rich notes. And then obviously that lime is zingy and cutting through it. That's better. Oh, it's so weird using kind of manufactured hand cream after all this time of using my own balms. Oh, it makes me feel like a lady. Mm, yum, yum, yum. Anyway, yes, so clothing. Now, um... I don't really have a budget for clothes. Uh, I certainly don't have a load of money to be spending on them. I don't have, like I said, I don't have a budget. I don't have a sort of an amount and I say, well, there's £200 for this year's wardrobe. No, it doesn't work like that at all. Um, I tend to pick up bits sort of as and when I see them and I can afford them. Um, before I went wage free, I used to buy a lot of my things from the Ethical Superstore because they do great ranges of clothes, all sorts of different companies that they've brought together under one roof, as it were. And all these companies use sort of organic bamboo, organic cotton, organic hemp. So it absolutely fits with my ethos. And not just sort of the organic fabrics, but also the ethics of the people who make 
the garments, so fair wages, healthcare, childcare provision, that sort of thing. But they did, they did used to cost quite a bit of money. You know, a top would maybe be 60 or 70 pounds. So obviously I'd try and wait till they had to sail on and get that for say 35, 40. Great clothes, well made, last an age. And I think that's the big thing, isn't it? Is try to buy well, buy once and make clothes last. However, that's obviously out of my budget these days. So now I stick to buying purely from charity shops. Now for anyone outside of the UK, you'll often hear me and other Brits talking about charity shops. And it's a great win-win-win scenario for three parties. So our charity shops are shops in our regular high streets, you know, so next door to the cafe, next door to the post office, what have you. They have a reduced rent and basically the, the entire contents of the shop have been donated to them by ordinary folk like me. So for example, when I finished with a book, I'll give it to a charity shop. That saves me, the donator, from putting something into landfill. It gets something off my hands. We're recycling. Brilliant. There's your first win. The charity shops get to sell it and because of their reduced overheads, there's quite a big profit in that for them. So fantastic, that money goes into the charity. And then me, as the purchaser, as the shopper, I get to find things that I need, which otherwise I, I just wouldn't be able to afford. So, yay! Uh, and the reason this has come up at the moment, one of the reasons it's come up, A, because I've got a load of repairs to do, but B, and I'll show you one in a minute, I've, I've had a few items of clothing that have gotten beyond repair. They are just beyond it, they are so threadbare, the the repairs are over the top of repairs, over the top of repairs. There's more repair thread than original fabric thread. So I've been desperate to get hold of just, just a few things, just a couple of tops and things. Um, but of course with lockdown, they've all been shut all this time. Uh, so I've been repairing more than usual. Uh, but they finally reopened, so I've been able to pick up a couple of things, including this one. I love this. Can you, I don't know if you can make out. It's got little bicycles all over it, but it's nice. It's floaty. I like loose garments. I like sort of floating. So that's been brilliant. Uh, I, yes, sorry. <laughs> I've got to gather my thoughts which way round I want to do this. That's partly what's prompted today's video. A few of the bits from the charity shops will need repairs. I'll come on to that in a second. So, with all my clothes, yes, try to buy well, try to buy quality in the first place, and keep doing your running repairs. Literally, as soon as something goes wrong, a little hole appears, a button falls off, I get it repaired straight away so that the problem can't get worse. So, Oh, you can't quite see from there, can you? I've got a couple of tops here. I've got a couple of pairs of trousers. They all need a stitch in time to save nine. The other thing with um, looking after our clothes is, I think most people probably launder their clothes way more than they need to. And every time we put anything into the washing machine, all that action in the washing machine, that is wear and tear on our clothes as well as us wearing them. So, maybe just consider washing your clothes less. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about all your undercrackers or, you know, close fitting garments like your little vest or whatever, or if you're doing particularly manual, smelly work where you're sweating a lot and stinking or the work itself is quite dirty and smelly, of course you're gonna wash. But generally speaking, you know, if you're if you're having an easy breezy day, the chances are the, the top you've worn for that day and your pair of jeans, just hang them up overnight to air. Don't be tempted to just chuck everything in, in the washing basket at the end of every day. Because like I say, it does wear clothes. So, <coughs> excuse me, when it comes to repairs, 
and this applies to one of the things I've got from the two of the things I've got from the charity shops just now. I tend to prefer to repair before I wash and alter after I wash. So if it's a repair like a popped seam, a button off, that sort of thing, I like to get it repaired, then wash it because if something's got a hole in it or I've popped a seam or whatever, the chances are if I put it into the wash, by the time it comes out of the wash, that hole, that problem is going to have been exacerbated while it's in the machine. So get the repairs done, put it in the washing machine, boom, new item of clothing comes out almost. Now, if I'm buying something at a charity shop and I want to alter it, Oh, I maybe want to take up the hem, maybe I want to take in the waist, maybe I want to change the collar, some such thing. On those occasions, I will wash it first. I'll wash it, give it a nice pressing, then go to work on it. So before I come on to the charity shop stuff, um, just let me tell you about a couple of repairs I've got on the go at the moment. Well, I'm, I'm going to do. Hold on a sec. Right. So this top, you'll have all seen it over and over again. I wear it in the garden loads. <laughs> you recognise it? It is beyond hope. It's gone beyond hope because, I don't know if you're going to be able to make out, but the fabric is so fine and threadbare now. I mean, it's such a fine fabric anyway. It's just splitting all the time, all around. <clears throat> You'll be able to see my finger through this, I think. Can you see? <laughs> you can, can't you? And all along this, this bottom hem where you see it's all frayed. I mean, it really is beyond it now, uh, which is a shame. It had a big repair. Can you see my patchwork, little patchwork patch there? That was, I leaned over and momentarily went, burnt it on a candle. <clears throat> Silly girl. So yeah, I'm a bit gutted. Oh, also the other thing is in the neck, the elastic has completely lost its elasticity. So for filming, it's really no good because it, it massively gapes and no one needs that much of an eyeful when I'm filming. So it's beyond repair but I'm going to give it another life. Yeah! I'm basically going to unpick, deconstruct the entire garment, then use my deconstructed pieces as a pattern to make exactly the same top again, because I do love it. It's comfy, it's got pockets. I love a garment with a pocket. More pockets in a minute. Pockets are great. I can pop my glasses in there, pop or pack of seeds in there from in the garden. So it's been a really comfy top to wear, really practical top. I've absolutely loved it. I'm going to make at least one new one out of this old one as a pattern. There's quite a lot of fabric in it. It's a really big baggy top. Uh, yeah, there's a ton of fabric in it, but I think, I think I've got enough of a piece that's super vintage. I think it's about late 50s, early 60s that have been knocking around in my great aunt's house for ages. And I've been having a sort through her fabrics with her. She was wanting me to take some. Saw this one, it's so pretty. When I got onto that another day, I will show you this and how I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna talk in a minute or so about some basic skills of garment making to make all of this easier. So that's my little pink top. This is an, I need a bigger table. This is another top, it's a favorite summer top. Again, you'll recognize it from the garden. Again, I like kind of floaty things. I like this because it's longer at the back. It gives me a bit of bum coverage. But typically with any bits that have broader anglaise in them, well, you can see what's happened, can't you? The entire pattern is pulling apart. And you can probably see here, behind it, there is a little patch where I've already done a patch repair. But, let me turn it this way, so you can see it's, it's 
the sort of the yoke section either side. This is <laughs> such a massive hole and because I've had already had to repair this area about three or four times already, one, and I'm fed up with doing that, what I'll do now is I'll make a pattern of this section, so from the shoulder, the neck, and down to that little yoke seam there. I'll make a pattern of that. I'll find a lightweight cotton, a very similar weight cotton in an ivory from my stash. And what I'll do is I'll, comp I'll make a complete patch for this area, but I'll put it on from behind so that from the outside you still can see the sort of the, the effect of the broad anglaise. So I'll get that on. It'll be sewn all around the edges, but then also in little discrete places, I will just do a little, a really small little zigzag stitch just to, just to hold this fabric against the patching piece. So oh, that one's gonna be a bit fiddly, a bit annoying, but it'll be worth it because like I say, this is another one of those, it's a really comfy top. It's perfect and practical in the garden. It covers up all my bits that I want to have covered. Um, and like I say, if I, if I now do just a much, just a huge, great big patch, that should keep it going for ages and ages and ages. And then when that eventually wears out, well, to be honest, at that stage, that top is probably going to be beyond it. But there might be some bits of the fabric I can save and put in my scraps, um, in my scraps basket, because you just never know, do you? I mean, that's the thing about make, do and mend, isn't it? Never throw anything away. Ah, oh, talking of never throwing anything away, for instance, uh, it's a really sweet little button on the neckline. The day this garment does die, that button will come off. Something you need to check for in your own local area is if you are getting rid of textiles, excuse me, that are, um, that are completely beyond it in terms of whether it's a garment to wear or for patch it, or you know, if you're doing patchwork or whatever, checking your local area for rag collection, because there are still rag collections going on uh, where these things, these items which are beyond use can get shredded and then they become, oh, things like stuffings for padded envelopes, mattress stuffings, all sorts of things. So we still don't need to think about landfill at that stage. Right, the main thing I wanted to talk about today was this thing about having getting your bargain clothes, obviously looking after them. Um, so this one behind me, let me show you. It's a really nice frock. <laughs> You'll probably see it in the garden at some point soon. It's a beautiful linen. It's so lovely. I just love the colour, the pattern. It's got pockets. What's not to love? Now, this is something where you know, my charity shops recently, prices have gone really high. So a dress like this could be 15 to 20 pounds. And if you're living on a almost zero budget, that's still a lot of money to pay, 15, 20 quid. That's more than I've got spare in a week. That's pretty much would be about my budget for a whole month, gone. So it's still quite expensive. Tops in most of the charity shops around here are sort of seven or eight pounds. Skirts, anywhere between sort of six and ten pounds. So again, it's still really quite expensive. I know a lot of folk have said to me, why don't I, you know, go and buy a load of men's shirts to do my bunting with? Well, to be honest, the amount of material I can get out of a man's shirt uh, compared with buying new material for a meter, it's actually cheaper in the most part for me to buy new. I do look out for things like old curtains and duvets and things like that because then it can work out cheaper. Anyway, digressing. So yeah, most of the places around here are, they're on the side of expensive that precludes someone like me. However, it's always worth a rummage on the, the, the sale rails 
So a couple of my places have rails where everything is five pounds or less. One of my favorite places used to always have a pound rail, but they've got rid of that now. Anyway, so less than a fiver. Now, generally, things on the sale rail are there because they're really disgusting. <laughs> like nylon polyester nastiness. Ugh. But occasionally they're on there because they've got a fault. And this is where it pays to learn a few really basic sewing skills. Because I've picked this dress up, this really lovely linen dress, which ought to have been about 20 quid. I've picked it up for a couple of quid because it's going to be a bit hard to make out. Uh, here is a pocket and here was another pocket. I don't know if you're going to be able to make out. Can you see my pins in there? So basically this whole pocket was hanging off and with the nature of linen, I think whoever had previously owned it had washed it before taking it to the charity shop, which is really kind, nice of them. But in washing it, this whole pocket had kind of scrunched up and was starting to fray, which is why I'm saying don't wash before your repairs. So when I was in the shop, the thing to do, check all over for damage. If there's a great big hole right by your bum or by your boob or something, and a patch in that area is gonna look weird, then you might wanna walk away. With this, I kind of sort of tried to stretch the material out again of the pocket to make sure it was all there, to make sure it was big enough, and it was. That was great. If it hadn't been, the other thing I could have considered is to just remove what was left of the pocket. It's just sort of, it's a patch pocket. It's top stitched onto the garment, so it's a really, really easy fix. Um, I could have just removed the rest of the pocket Actually, I say that it is into the side seam, but I could have opened the side seam to get it out. Take the whole thing off. Then there might be an issue that perhaps the fabric behind is faded and it would stand out. In that kind of scenario, I could also think about, because I quite like a contrast fabric, I could have looked at the different colours in the flowers on here and thought, OK, I'll find a fabric in my stash to match the colour. A similar weight of fabric. I might not have linen, but I would almost certainly have a cotton of a similar weight and just make a brand new patch pocket. And if it looked odd against the other one because it didn't match, take the other one off, put two matching contrast patch pockets off, keep the old patch pocket just in case I get a big hole somewhere else and I want to do sort of like an invisible mend from behind. Great. So I haven't washed this again yet because I just don't want to risk it fraying even more. So all I did was I've spritzed it with my, I always have a, a spritzing bottle hanging on my ironing board. Whatever I'm pressing, I'm always spritzing to get a, just get a much better, smoother finish. So I've given it a really good spritz till it was almost soaking wet. Ironed it, ironed it, ironed it got it back in shape and now it's pinned and ready for me to stitch back on. So basically, for the effort of me doing that bit of stitching, I mean, it's almost free. It's an almost free dress at a couple of quid, isn't it? There was another one, who you can see behind? I love this one in the rich pinks. That's got a bit of a pop on one of the seams. And again, it won't be too much of a, too much of, a, of an issue to fix it. Um, yeah, just sew it back together. I made some notes because I didn't want to forget things because I want to talk about what to look for, what to look out for, what to be wary of if you're going to buy damaged stuff and fix it yourself. So something like a pocket like that, <clears throat> dead easy. A seam that's popped, so you've got all your fabric still, again, that's a relatively easy fix. Buttons, missing buttons, really easy fix but a word of caution. Let's say you find a really beautiful blouse top and it should have seven buttons and it's only got six and your top one is missing. It's always the top one, isn't it? And I guess that's because we tend to mm, 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 more with our top ones. The top one is missing. 
you have not got a matching button in your button collection because I jolly well hope you all have a button collection. Mine is extensive and sometimes I just like to put my fingers in the button jar. Ooh. Top one's missing, you haven't got one to match. Oh, take off all the other six, buy seven brand new buttons that match. Buttons are actually really expensive. I'm gonna talk about that some more in a second when I tell you about this garment. Don't bother. Take your bottom button off and put it at the top because it will match all of those. Because the chances are your bottom button is going to be tucked into your skirt, your jeans, your trousers, whatever it is, on a man's shirt, whatever it is. That bottom button is almost invariably going to be tucked away beneath a waistband, hidden out of sight. No one is going to know. If you put a spare button down there that's ever so slightly different to the rest of them, who's going to know? And even if it's something that you wear out loose, and like I say, your top button's missing, you've gone through your collection and you find one, you think, oh, it's so similar, but not quite there. If you put it on the bottom, the chances are no one's going to notice. And of course, the other option is you could make... Uh, uh, a design decision, a creative decision, make a virtue of it and put a completely different button at the top, completely contrasting button. There you go, add a new little feature on your garment, especially if it's a plain white shirt. You know, you suddenly put a little pinky button on when all the rest are white or even go through your button collection and change all of them and have a rainbow of buttons down the front. Who's to know that that wasn't exactly how it was supposed to be in the first place? Now, just a note on the button thing. So, they are really expensive to buy new. Um, for instance, you know, if you're, if you're looking at big coat jacket type buttons like this, it's wooden buttons, they can be a pound each. Now, this garment has got one, two... Oh, I'll show you the front. It's got eight buttons. So to replace, these have all been replaced. So to replace all these buttons, it was eight pounds, which is a lot of money. However, the jacket was worth it. So it's a Betty, Jack a Betty Jackson jacket. It's beautiful. It's all fully lined. Absolutely gorgeous. There's the little Betty Jackson label. I know that this jacket is worth a lot of money. I didn't buy it as an investment in terms of to sell it on. I bought it because it's a really, really great garment and I know it's going to last me forever. So it's worth the investment. It's this beautiful kind of velvet baby cord almost. I mean, it's, it's really, really stunning. Oh, I have to hold it down a second, it's really heavy as well. Now, because it had one button missing, I mean, it should have been about 40 quid there because my charity shop also does some of the designer stuff. They'd got it on the five pound rail. To me, it was a no brainer, five quid for a really beautiful, fully lined, gorgeous jacket. Even if I have to spend eight quid on buttons, still only 13 quid. Where are you gonna get a jacket like that for 13 quid from? I love it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to just put it down again because it is really heavy. Thing is, uh, the dark thing about it is, <clears throat> I bought it and I was so excited. I went straight to my favourite fabric shop. Uh, you've all heard me talking about it often. So I had it in, in my little bag, whizzed over to my favourite fabric shop with it so that I could look at buttons, check for the size from going through the buttonholes, get a nice button for to match the fabric. The other thing is the original buttons on it were like a gold, shiny. They looked cheap, actually. They weren't to my taste. So nice matchup with the colour, matchup with the whole size. Bought my eight, thought about buying nine to have a spare, decided against it. Got home, I thought, great. Let's get sewing, take the old buttons off. I found the missing button in the pocket of the garment. <laughs> it had all its buttons. Oh my goodness. So that's another thing. Just check pockets as well. <clears throat> now, like I say, 
with that one, it wasn't really an issue. Uh, I didn't go, oh, are you kidding me, too much, because I really, really didn't like the buttons that were on it. They just looked, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> gulping. They just looked cheap and tacky to me, and I felt the garment deserved better. I have, though, I've kept all of those original buttons. They're in a bag, and the bag is labelled that it's Betty Jackson jacket, so that if one day I do tire of it, and it's still in good condition, I can put all those original buttons back on it and sell it as an original vintage garment. I love buying and selling clothes. I love buying and selling anything. So yeah, if you, if you get one of these type of garments that is a bit more expensive, a bit sort of one of those designer things, if you take anything original off, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, because then one day if you want to resell it, you can put all the original stuff back. Another note on the buttons, especially on things like coats and jackets, where generally speaking, the button is a much heavier button. And I think we probably be a bit more rough when we're taking on and off our, our jackets and coats than we are with say, you know, you've got a nice silk blouse on, you do it carefully. So therefore I think coat and jacket buttons get much more wear and tear and are much more likely to come off. So when you're sewing your new buttons on or replacing one, whatever it is, wax your thread. So tailors will more often than not use a waxed thread for buttons. Waxing the thread just makes it so much stronger and more durable. It's dead easy to do. Uh, a block of beeswax, select your length of thread, however long you want for, for doing that button. And then with the thread, hold the thread against the, the block of beeswax and sort of pull it through, pull it through. Just pull it against the beeswax. Four or five times should give you a nice coating on it. Brilliant. Stitch away, much stronger thread. Yay! <laughs> so now, like I said, buttons, dead simple a popped seam so long as fabric hasn't ripped as it's popped really pretty simple uh, a patch pocket pockets on the outside dead simple even things like a hole in the garment uh, just have a look where that hole is and then think to yourself I could applique something over it so whether it's <laughs> Like on my old pink shot, look, even the little patch has faded over time. <laughs> um, you know, could you applique something on it? Could you put a little patch on it? Is it actually going to add to it? Is it going to give it a bit of quirk to make it more yours? Perhaps it's a case of, yes, you could put a patch there, but you'd want to put one on the other side too, to even things out. Perhaps it's a sort of thing where you could patch the hole and then put a pocket over the top. So it just looks like a pocket and no one would ever know that hole had been there. So just because something's got a hole in it, don't discount that too. Just look at where that hole placement is and think about, can it be covered in some clever way? Um, I think where we get into two slightly more tricky areas is like with say with this jacket torn linings and zips so this is where i'd say it's really good oh and back to this and making a pattern from it it's really good to develop some basic garment construction skills because if you know how a garment goes together the sequence of it then you can undo that sequence you can go backwards in that sequence to the point at which you need to intervene so for example let's say a zip on a skirt that zip will have gone in in terms of the sequence of of the garment being made it will have gone in way before the waistband well mostly it would have done you might have an invisible zip that goes right up through the waistband. Generally speaking, the waistband will have gone on later. 
with either a button or a, a hook and bar closure, press stud even, what have you. So um, I would say that replacing a zip on a garment, replacing a broken zip, <clears throat> it's a little bit more advanced in terms of the skills you need. But it's one of those things, have a go, practice, practice on something you no longer need. And back to that thing of knowing the way the garment is constructed, if you know about the waistband going on last, you know that you're gonna to need to take, either take the waistband off completely, or at least unpick it at that closure point. Unpick it enough so you've got access to that zip to take it out and put a new one in and then bring the waistband back and, and stitch that back into place. I hope that makes sense. And likewise with making this, this blouse, I need to know how, or I need to have a fair idea of how it was constructed in the first place in order for me to take it apart in reverse order so that I don't damage any of those pieces. They come out whole, as it were, and they become my pattern with the seam allowance showing as well because I'll see that bit next to wherever the seam was. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So yeah, I think if you've never had a go at dressmaking before, certainly tackle repairs, definitely tackle repairs, not just to your, you know, your garments of your own, but then, you know, be adventurous when you're buying secondhand stuff, that even if it's a bit like, ooh, there's something wrong with it, have a go at doing simple repairs, simple makeovers, what have you. If you've got a sewing machine, great. If you've got a sewing machine you've never used, maybe you've inherited one, have a look at your local library, for example. Uh, a lot of our local sort of libraries and community centres, they do one-off beginner type courses. So if you can enrol to do, you know, a really basic dressmaking course, fantastic. Of course, I'm forgetting there's YouTube, isn't there? Oh, the saviour of everything these days. I am sure, I haven't looked myself because I... I I haven't had anything so tricky that I need help with. And I don't mean that in a big headed way. I just mean, you know, I've, I've been doing my learning for the last 40 years, but I am absolutely sure there will be tons of tutorials on YouTube for dressmaking. I was even thinking myself, although I'm just probably hoisting myself by my own petard now, that over next winter, when things are more quiet in the garden, I was thinking I might see if I can start doing a really simple dressmaking course on YouTube with you guys, but who knows? Um, it's always a time issue with me. It's always time. And I need to get on with sewing for things to sell to make money. But anyway, yeah, have a look in your area. See if there are, there are any courses. You'd probably be able to pick up books in your library or even secondhand at the charity shop, you know, for a couple of quid. Charity shop books are getting so expensive now as well, aren't they? Um, just looking at my list, because I am i don't want to forget anything that I wanted to mention. No, I don't think I've forgotten anything. Um, so yeah, there we go. How to have a wardrobe for virtually no money. It might not be the most high fashion wardrobe. Who cares? I don't care about looking the latest trend. In fact, I don't want to because that to me smacks of throwawayness. <laughs> Is that even a word? Um, yeah, I just I just find things which are practical, useful, that I like. I like the look of, I like the fabric. I know I'm going to wear it, wear it, wear it, wear it. These, I can't wait. I'm gonna get on with this this afternoon um, because I'm hopefully Hopefully the sun will come back and then I can start wearing it in a couple of days. I hope so. We'll see. And then, so what else? Yeah, I think I'm going to get on with all my repairs. I've got trousers and stuff to repair here as well. And then I'm going to leave this for another day because, like I said, the, the, the fabric on it is so fine and threadbare that I want to... Oh! There's another hole. 
Look, I hope you can see from that, look how threadbare it is, can you see? Yeah, it's so threadbare that I want to be really, really careful when I unpick it. Um, to be honest though, <clears throat> it's such a big baggy top. There will be some forgiveness in it, uh, in terms of using it as a pattern and making it up again. And it's one of those things where, you know, once I've well, probably even before I cut, I'll just double check measurements and probably tack it. It's one of those things I'll probably tack together first, baste together first, see how I like the fit, make my adjustments and then do my final sewing. Can't wait. It's funny. Um, oh, so I don't know how long I've been going on yet. Um, no. <clears throat> We've had this show on British TV called... Great British Sewing Bee, is it? I think it's had about maybe three or four series on TV by now. And what they do is they have 12 contestants, 12 sewers, and each week they have three challenges. And each week someone gets knocked out of the competition and someone gets chosen as Garment of the Week. Uh, and it's wonderful. It's just, so I've just, I've recently, I saw the last series, got completely addicted to it. Um, it's just wonderful seeing all these different people, their different techniques, their imaginations. Oh, it really, really gets the juices going. And every week I'd watch it, I think, oh, I love that frock. Oh, I love that one. Oh, what a cute top. Hmm, I could do that. I could do that. And I used to make all my own clothes in, the, in sort of my late teens and through my 20s. I used to make everything. But I had a ton of time in those days. These days, not so much, but, oh, I don't know. It's just, it's it's done that, you know, that thing when you go, oh, yeah, you can feel something rising up in yourself. It's definitely got me sewing juices flowing in terms of dressmaking. So I think I am going to try and maybe over the winter. It's that thing, it's sod's law. I will shut up in a minute. It's that thing, isn't it, over winter when we get out of our gardens, because the garden takes up so much of my time obviously um the the winter is the time when i'm not in the garden finally i'm free to do other things but of course there's hardly any light <laughs> the the days are so short and what light there is is such poor quality uh that in some ways i don't really want to be sewing in winter in the winter i move this table over into the window just to make the most of whatever light there is there so yeah anyway that's all that's all months and months down the line for now i've got my work cut out i've got i've got masses masses to be getting on with this afternoon i can listen to an old tennis match of course normally at this time of year i'd be listening to the tennis whilst doing sewing or whatever it is i'm doing uh but yeah, an old match will have to suffice for now. So, I need to get rid of you all. Come on, off you go. I need to do some tennis and some sewing. Yay! I hope that's giving you some um, ideas. Oh, itchy snozzle. I hope that's giving you some ideas of, of ways to look out for getting things cheaper and, and, and having a go at repairing. I hope more than anything, it's inspired you to have a go. Have a go at doing your own repairs. <clears throat> have a go at taking your repairs beyond to the next stage where you're actually getting a bit creative with it and changing things up a bit. And maybe, maybe even to have a go at making your own first garment. Keep it simple, stupid. It's the kiss technique, isn't it? Um, look, keep zips for when you've had a bit of practice with other stuff because zips they can be a bit tricky and the last thing you want to do is be a learner you know really really early stage learner and then just put yourself off the whole process by mucking up a zip um because once you've sussed it once you've sussed a zip it's they're fine they're fine so don't put yourself off early doors by trying to do something too tricky but yeah have a go have a go right Time to get the sewing machine out. Time to say cheerio to you lot. Time to put the tennis on. Oh, time to make myself a cup of tea too. So I'll see you all again really soon, I hope. Um, 
back in the garden. I, oh yes, back in the garden. I've got a whole list of things to be getting on with there too. So until then, please look after yourselves, look after each other and look after your clothes. <laughs> Bye for now.